going to look at grade 10 Euclidean geometry. We're going to look at particularly a theorem that states that the diagonals of a rectangle are equal. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to look at the definition of a rectangle. A rectangle is a parallelogram that has all four angles equal. Now here's the drawing that we have here. This is a parallelogram. This side is parallel to that one. That one is parallel to that one. The difference between a parallelogram and a rectangle is that the, the angles are 90 degrees. So why are we interested in the parallelogram? Because a rectangle is a parallelogram, is an example of a parallelogram. The difference is that it has 90 degrees. So let's look at the properties of a parallelogram. Why do we need to look at the properties of a parallelogram? When we are doing our proof, we're going to need these properties to, to do our proof. So the first property is that a parallelogram, both pairs of equal sides are parallel. Side PQ is parallel to side SR. As you see, the arrows that indicate the, that they are parallel. PS is parallel to QS, as the arrows indicate. The next bullet, both pairs of opposite sides are equal. Uh, PS is equal to SR. PS is equal to QR. Both pairs of opposite angles are equal. In a parallelogram, they will not be 90 degrees. They will just be equal. The opposite angles, angle P will be equal to angle R. Angle Q will be equal to angle S. In this case, because it's a rectangle, they are also 90 degrees. And then the last one, the diagonals bisect each other. So the, a diagonal is a line that cuts the shape into two parts. The diagonal here is P, R, and Q, S. Now, in this case, the theorem that we are proving says that the diagonals of a rectangle are equal. So we're going to prove that P, R is equal to Q, S. Right, let's, let's, let's see what are we supposed to do to prove a, a theorem. The theorem that we are supposed to prove, we're going to prove that the problem that states that the diagonals of a rectangle are equal. For any theorem in any grade, when you're proving the theorem, you must ask yourself, what am I required to prove? Required to prove. And you're going to write what we are required to prove before you start proving. The second thing, you must do the construction. In this case, we're going to construct the diagonals. We're going to do the construction. If you don't have construction, you don't have marks. If the construction is wrong, you don't have marks. You need to learn the construction before you go to the exam. The third thing that you do, you decide which term, or you learn which theorem for this proof um, I'm going to use to prove the theorem. You need to know beforehand, in this theorem, I use this theorem. Right, let's look at an example. In this question, we are required to prove that the diagonal PR equals to diagonal QS. The diagonals are not there. This is what you are required to prove. So you are required to prove PR is equals to QS. This part. Number two, construction. You want to draw those. I'll show you when you get to a whiteboard. When you actually do the proof, you draw them. And then the next part. You decide which theorem. So for this theorem, you don't decide. You learn. For this theorem, you use congruency. So we're going to use congruency to prove the theorem. So if you have forgot the, the congruency that you did in grade 9, go revise them. Now we are moving to the whiteboard so that we can do the proof. Now on our whiteboard, we're going to prove the theorem. Let's look at the you remember from the previous slide that the first thing that you must do is what you are required to prove. Now you are required to prove that diagonal PR is equal to diagonal QS. Now these diagonals are not there, so you need to construct them. That's your second part. You're going to construct, you're going to draw. 
P R and Q S. Because it's construction, it was not part of the diagram. You're gonna do it with dotted lines so that whoever is marking your script will know this is your construction. And remember, no construction, no marks. Wrong construction, no marks. Right. Now the third part is to do the proof. Now, if you remember from our previous slide, we said we're gonna use congruency to prove this theorem. So, with congruency, we have two triangles. We're gonna use this triangle, P, R, S. So we're gonna write in triangle, P, R, S and triangle. Then we're gonna do the other triangle and triangle Q S R and triangle Q S R. Now, what do we know about these triangles? We're gonna look at the colors. We're gonna look at the red and the green. We're going to start with the green. What do we know about the green triangle? Is that PS P S is equals to on the red triangle QR. Why are they equal? Because it is a parallelogram or you can use that it's a rectangle because opposite angles opposite sides of the rectangle are equal. Line SR in the green triangle. When you're doing congruency, the triangle that you wrote first, you must write the details of the triangle first. So the green triangle we wrote, we wrote first. SR in the green triangle. SR is equal to, but when you look at the red triangle, it also has SR. So it's equal to SR. And then the line is common. So it's a common line. Right? Now the third part that we have, we have our angle on the green triangle. We have angle PSR, PSR, angle PSR is equal to angle on the red one, QRS, QRS, and they are both 90 degrees. Why? Because they are angles of a rectangle. Angles of a rectangle are 90 degrees. Now, we have three conditions that you can use to, that we, we need to prove congruence. So we can say, therefore, our triangle PRS is congruent to triangle QRS, and our reason is a side and a side and a common angle. If these two triangles are congruent, which means they are exactly the same. Therefore, the lines are equal. Therefore, we have proven our theorem that line P R, which is a diagonal, is equal to Q S. That's how we do the proof. Mm -hmm.